Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Rebecca again with another fragrance review. Uh, it's been a while. Sorry, guys, uh, to my subscribers. Thanks again for subscribing, guys. Uh, it's been a while. I've been uh, working on my new album. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, you know I'm a musician. And uh, I'm super busy with a day job and other stuff. And I've um, kind of had uh, a lot going on here uh, in the last couple of months. But uh, thanks again for watching my videos and for subscribing. And I hope everyone had a good Halloween and Thanksgiving. And uh, we have Christmas coming up. Uh, today it's sleeting outside here in Texas and uh, up here in North Texas. Uh, so I won't have work tomorrow. So I had some time to sit down and do another video with you guys. Um, it's this this uh, this fragrance right here is like uh, all of my categories uh, combined to make one, which is like my masterpiece series, my uh, cheap but goody uh, series, affordable or whatever you want to call it, but really really good quality. Uh, and it's none other than Midnight in Paris by Van Cleef and Arpels, and uh, this stuff is phenomenal. So let me start with showing you guys the box, and um, here it is right here. That's the back. Sorry, nothing too fancy with the uh, with the box here. It's just kind of a it's got some kind of weird uh, little uh, design there and some coloration stuff, some high gloss on there. Nothing too uh, nothing too fancy. This is the EDT, which apparently this fragrance comes in the EDP as well. Uh, I haven't tried that one, but I've read a lot of comparisons online. And they say that it is uh, smells almost exactly the same, and uh, that the strength of the fragrance is almost exactly the same, which is weird because of EDP, the perfume is usually a concentrated version that lasts a lot longer. But everything I've heard uh, is that it's it lasts exactly the same amount of time. So I don't know. Uh, anyway, so I have the EDT version here. Here's the box, and here is the bottle. Have to say, I don't think I'm ever gonna do a, my favorite bottle video, but right now this thing is at the top of my list. Um, this is probably my number one bottle as of now from all the bottles that I've seen. Uh, the box, not so much. Uh, I guess I knock off a couple of points for the box because the box isn't that special, but the bottle is phenomenal. Uh, we have some diamond. If you can see that, sorry, coming at you a little close here. We have some diamond stitching or some etching here. And the silver, it's a silver cap with a black in interior here. Uh, really good sprayer. I, don't, I really honestly don't want to waste a sprayer right now. Actually, I'll, you know, I'll go ahead and do it right here on my wrist. But this sprayer is really, really good. It, uh, it sprays a lot. So probably only need about three to four sprays for this one, depending on where you spray. Because a lot comes out. So use, use sparingly because you'll waste a lot of juice if you don't... Uh, if you don't uh, want to, you know, because I, right now I got this two days ago. I got a new bottle two days ago, and it's already down like that much. So you got to use it, um, you know, sparingly, because it's a really good sprayer. So anyway, uh, we got we got a night sky here. Uh, apparently, it's uh, supposed to be this fragrance is supposed to be interpretation of nighttime of a nighttime date in Paris. Your head in the stars. So we have stars here on uh, the front of the bottle and uh, we have constellations or whatnot here and it's uh, a really cool looking uh, if you can see, I don't know if you can even see in the light here but it's just really cool looking it's like a clear here and it fades to yellow with like with like a purplish blue um, just a really great bottle it uh, it has like this this silver outlining all the way around the bottle here has the information at the bottom the ounces or whatever and it says Midnight in Paris here, and it says Van Cleef and Arpels, which is the maker here. Um, so, yeah, that is a uh, phenomenal bottle. A lot of points for that one. They did a great job on this bottle. So, um, Midnight in Paris uh, was released in 2010. It's considered a floral oriental leather. Uh, the noses behind this is, per please forgive me if I say this wrong, but Domintil Berthier and Oliver Polge, which Oliver Polge, uh, you've probably heard his name a lot if, you, uh, if you're if you into fragrances quite a bit or whatever and you kind of do a little research here and there. Uh, but he's done a lot uh, a lot of uh, the flankers for Burberry. He's done uh, Dior Homme, which is one of my favorites. Uh, he's done uh, by, he's done Quar Beluga by uh, Guerlain. Uh, he's also responsible for Flower Bomb and Spice Bomb, 
which Flower Bomb is my favorite perfume, one of my favorite perfumes on women. Spice Bomb is, is one of my favorite colognes as well. I haven't reviewed that one yet, but I'll get to that one uh, soon, I'm sure. And he is responsible for Lone Libre uh, from YSL. He actually did another from the Lone line as well by YSL, uh, but uh, I didn't, I left that one out because I like Libre more. So anyway, um, the notes uh, here at the top are uh, holly, rosemary, bergamot, uh, Amalfi lemon, uh, leather. Sorry. Uh, the mid is styrax, lily of the valley, and tea. Uh, the base is incense, benzoin, tonka bean, uh, almond, and amber. Okay, so this fragrance, right when you start it, well, you know, to start first off. This has been compared to Bulgari Black by everybody who's ever reviewed this. Uh, everyone who has ever, um, you know, any, every review I've ever read online has always been compared to Bulgari Black. And uh, I'll smell Bulgari Black, you know. Uh, Bulgari Black is, is uh, this, it's like, it looks, they call it the hockey puck. It comes in this black container with a silver top and it looks, it's like black leather. Uh, so right when I first saw it, I had a feeling that it was going to be leather, or I'm sorry, not leather, uh, um, uh, rubber. Like a, it comes in a black rubber container, uh, which I guess it made it look like a tire. So, um, but the same opening, uh, I guess the I don't really know. I'm assuming it's the leather, uh, the leather note or whatever else gives it that really harsh rubbery. This one doesn't have it. Midnight in Paris actually does a better job with with that leather note, uh, but the uh, but Bulgari Black uh, they it. What turned me off was the opening to that fragrance. I mean, it was, it was almost disgusting. I, I didn't like it at all. It really did smell like like rubber, uh, and it's just uh, very off-putting. And it's not I'm, the opening for me is like one of the best things on a fragrance. And then the dry, obviously the dry downs is good too. But man, like if you can't get me on the opening, then I'm I'm not gonna wear it. I mean, it has to be really really good for me to keep a fragrance around if the, if the opening isn't good. So I didn't like Bulgari Black too much because of that. Um, this one would be your best bet out of the two here. Uh, although some people online disagree, they like Bulgari Black a lot better to each their own. This is my own opinion. Um, anyway, so let's see. Um, I think I already went into, yeah, or I already finished the base. Well, I mainly get from this, um, let's see, the opening. Uh, it, is, it is a little rubbery, but it's really just leathery. That's really what I get for the majority of this fragrance, the majority of the entire life. It's mainly leather. We'll say... 95% of the time it's leather. Uh, the rest is I get um, I get a really dry, nutty scent from the almond and the tonka bean. Uh, I get a really um, nice mature, it, gets, it gives it a mature side with the incense. There's incense in this. Uh, and that's what gives it kind of a more, uh, somewhat of a mature feel. It's not really super mature. Uh, but if you didn't have the incense in there, it would, it would smell a lot uh, younger, if you will. You know, like a, like a, like a younger fragrance. Uh, the benzoin gives it its sweetness, and there's tea in this, and the tea, it gives it a cooling effect. So it works really well uh, contrasting with the leather, because the leather is like this kind of harsh, uh, really nice, harsh, fine leather smell. Uh, and it could come off a little off-putting to some people, but when you add that tea, it, it kind of gives it, gives it a clean, cooling scent uh, that just... Uh, they just did a really good job blending this thing. I, I can't believe that it's not more popular. Uh, I'm glad it's not because not everybody knows about this stuff. Not everybody wears it. And I, like I've said before in my other videos, I like being uh, a little exclusive. I like being, uh, I don't like everybody knowing what I'm wearing, even though I'm doing videos. Um, none of my friends wear this stuff. Um, so anyway, so that's what I am uh, mainly get. Um, this is a perfect for cold weather. Uh, I think you could probably wear it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty versatile. I think you can wear it year-round, honestly. Uh, but I would definitely wear this at night. A little bit cooler weather works best, but right in the fall or winter. Um, and definitely for a date. The ladies love this stuff. Um, anyway, the people, ladies, I know. Again, I mean, it's not like some secret magic potion uh, that's going to get ladies to come talk to you. But everyone, every every time I've worn this, I've I've gotten the ladies' attention from wearing it and whatnot. They always ask me what I'm wearing. Um, so anyway, it's perfect for a date, uh, and I'll get back to that in a second. 
Um, it lasts a really long time. The longevity I get out of this is eight to ten hours. I sprayed some on myself this morning, and I could still smell it all day. I just put a couple of hits on my neck. Uh, even though I was wearing it to work, I just wanted to try it out again just because it's a little bit cooler outside. I don't normally like wasting my good stuff at work because I work in a warehouse. Uh, but it, since it was cool, I wasn't getting hot and sweaty, so I wanted to go ahead and use this stuff today just so I could so I could smell it all day. Um, but it's so, but yeah, eight to ten hours, which I give I give that like a nine out of ten for the longevity because that's that's pretty much what I want. That's what I look for in a good fragrance that I really enjoy is uh, is, is a longevity. Let's see the projection. Uh, six out of ten, I'll give the projection. It's 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 okay, but you know this stuff is supposed to be worn close. It's supposed to be uh, like if you're, um, I mean, it's a date. I mean, midnight in Paris. You're on a date in Paris. It's midnight. You know, you got your loved one with you. You're holding hands. You're uh, just really close. And this stuff is really is meant to be shared closely. You know, so you know it doesn't hurt. I mean, really. I mean, think about it fellas you know like if you're with the lady and you're wearing the stuff and you know it's working if she can smell it and you know you're doing it you know it's working it's magic if uh, if you're that close anyway uh siage you know some people might disagree with me but i actually give this one seven out of ten for siage uh because uh, when i walk past people i guess it really all depends on how you wear it you know uh but that leather note man it really stays it stands out and when you walk by it's it really is subtle i mean this is a very very subtle fragrance it's not in your face i don't think it can get very cloying um it's not gonna i don't think it will offend anybody i mean i guess if you wore a, a lot lot it would but uh i mean sometimes i spray an extra couple of sprays on just because i it seems like it's not there but then it'll hit me like uh you know uh, the air current will move or whatever and i'll just catch a big waft right in my nose um and it just it, it and it catches me, but I like that, you know. Uh, I have some other fragrances that do the same thing. It's like a little, it's like a nice little surprise, you know. It kind of fades away, and you think it's gone, but then you'll just be, you know, the the, the current will change, and it'll just kind of kind of get you. Um, so to me, the sillage is good stuff because um, because it, it has that effect to me. So I know if I can smell it on myself, that if you know if you're walking by and the current catches you, I think. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that people can can still smell this. You know, if you're uh, in, you know a little insecure about the sea and just spray a couple more sprays. I, I promise you, they'll smell this stuff on you. Um, you know, this stuff really does remind me of like a, uh, and it's, it's going to sound dumb. There's no tobacco in this, uh, not that I know of anyway. It wasn't in the notes, but uh, this reminds me of like a cigar, almost like a very sweet cigar, kind of like um, uh, pure Havana almost. The sweetness of pure Havana. But, I mean, they don't smell alike. This just has that sweetness uh, to it, to where it makes me think of like a cigar store, uh, a sweet uh, cigar sm uh, smoke, the non-offending one, you know, uh, just to kind of that, um, that smell when you walk by. But, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is just a really great fragrance, you know. Uh, I got I to gotta say, it's a, to me, I call it a masterpiece. Uh, I, I, you can call me crazy, that's fine. It's just my own opinion. But I think it's a masterpiece because I don't smell this stuff every day. Uh, and Bulgari Black is like the only other thing that I've smelled that even remotely kind of smells like it. But I take this hands down. Um, it's super inexpensive. That is probably the, the the highest point of everything to me. This channel is called Dollars and Cents for a reason because I want to save you guys money. This is a 4.2 ounce. This is $39.99 on Amazon. Free shipping. That is cheap. This stuff easily could be sold for $100 for a 4.2 ounce bottle. And this is just the EDT. I, I haven't even looked up the EDP. I'm sure it's a little bit more expensive from what I read online. It's the same exact fragrance. I don't know why they, I mean, there's got to be a difference there. But from what I read and what I hear online, there's none. So I would go with the EDT. Um, save, a, save a couple extra dollars. But 4.2 ounce should last you a while. Um... And uh, thirty nine ninety nine free shipping. You can't beat that. That's a really great price. Um, this is just a great fragrance, you know. Uh, it really, you know, I wear. I just love. Even if I'm not going out and doing anything like intimate or, or you know, like a social or anything, I still just like to wear it on the house. It just, it smells really good. It has this really, just really great, sweet, calming effect. And the leather, it's just. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I really. I really I, usually, I'm really good with my words, but right now, I, I guess I don't know. I just can't think of what it is. 
it's just really calming. It just makes me feel really good. It's, it's really cozy. Uh, it's creamy. Um, you know, it's not offending. You can't offend anybody wearing this stuff. Um, it's just very, uh, it's not very intrusive. You won't be invading anybody's space. Um, I can't expect anybody to, you know, you just get nothing but compliments, I'm sure, with this stuff. But it's very subtle, so if, you know, because there's a lot of people that don't like wearing uh, uh, very strong colognes. There's a guy that I work with, and he wears a lot of cologne. He wants you to smell them. He wants that, that, that scent bubble, that sea trail to be like, you know, the next room kind of stuff, you know. I don't know if I want that much. Uh, but I do like to smell good, and I do like other people to smell it on me. So I think this stuff is like uh, Midnight in Paris. I think is a good choice to to go with. This is my own opinion, you know. Just, if you don't like sweet scents, which I I mainly go towards sweet. I, I I really do like sweet scents more than anything. I do like my sporty scents and whatnot. You know, I like a lot of everything, but mainly I do like sweet scents, you know. Uh, but Midnight in Paris, man, you know, I give it a nine out of ten, if not ten out of ten. I'd say nine out of ten for now, um, just because. If, you know, maybe if, I don't know what could make it a 10 out of 10, really put it over the top. Maybe if they added a different note, they could have made it pop a little bit more maybe. But right now, I think it's perfect the way it is. It's fine the way it is. Uh, I consider it a masterpiece. Uh, you can, I'll go ahead and put this under my masterpiece category because I don't know if I'll, I'll see anything else like this uh, anytime soon. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, you want to try something that's uh, sexy and cozy and sensual and a date fragrance that ladies like, uh, go with Midnight in Paris by Van Cleef and Arpels. Um, I don't even think they have that many other fragrances out, man. So, you know, I prom you know, not promise you, but I can pretty much guarantee you that you won't know anybody else that has this stuff. You'll be exclusive, and, I mean, it's all about being exclusive. You don't want to be biting everybody else's stuff, you know. You don't want to be taking everybody's ideas. Uh, this is definitely not like a one million, you know. You're going to definitely get, uh, have a little exclusivity with this one. So, you know, and you'll stand out from everybody else. So, that is uh, Midnight in Paris, and my name is Israel for Dollars and Cents. Thanks again, guys, for subscribing and for uh, commenting and stuff like that. Please, if you like this one, uh, comment below. Uh, let me know what you think of it. If you don't like it, let me know why. Uh, if you have any suggestions for anything I should try, um, I'm still getting my nose on a lot of stuff. You know, I actually just... Got a bunch of new Creed samples and some other samples that I'm really trying to work through and and uh, and uh, you know trying to trying to get my nose on them and really trying to figure them out and stuff and get a feel for them. Um, but anyway, like I said before, I got my new album coming out and I'm actually going to leave a, uh, a link to my music below just because uh, I don't know. I figured you guys maybe if you've seen all my videos, you kind of get to know me a little bit more. And uh, this is just something I do on the side. Music is my passion. I I do that almost full time. So I'd love to share that with you guys as well. So I'll leave a link to my music, to my website down below, and uh, you guys can uh, check it out and you know let me know what you think about that too. But anyway, so my name is Israel, and uh, until the next time, you guys uh, be safe, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.